WEMF Radio. The big story of the week. Yeah. What was it? Well, um, the DPH issued the licenses, and uh, out of the 20 applicants that applied, 11 people, or 11 uh, groups, were given uh, actual licenses in order to open Not even actual licenses yet. But they're still provisional? Yeah. What? Yeah. Huh? Still got to go through some more red tape. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They have to do the final inspections of the and buildings and stuff like that. Few. And they probably will cut another few. That's and, and and who knows how many will get to open. I wonder how much it costs for the next round of ex- inspections. How, how much have these people spent? Uh, the DPH <laughs> is such a scam. It did. Like, what they just done, too, like Cambridge is the only one, uh, Greenway, that we've had on the show. The only ones that we know that have gone out and got neighborhood approval, zoning approval, city approval. <laughs> yeah. And, and now they took their license away. It's it's, so it's completely ridiculous. And the, and the reasoning too, it's like uh, the Globe. Shame on you, uh, K. Lazar. I think your name is whatever your name is. The reporter at the Globe. Hack. You, didn't, you, you didn't even bring up. Uh, you just basically, oh, we got inside in- info from DPH because we made a deal with the devil. We're gonna pump up DPH. It's funny how the applicants couldn't even get the information why they got denied, but the Globe did. The Globe wrote this story that just attacked the applicants that didn't get approved. And uh, it was slanderous. It was totally slanderous and uh, directed towards Greenway again. I think Greenway, out of all the applicants, has the best chance of uh, staging some kind of you know, coup on this and trying to get there. Well, I, look at all the work that w- was done. You know, Millions look, of dollars. Look at all the cooperation that was attempted. You know, all the outreach and just being an all-around per- good person and wanting to provide a good service for the people of Cambridge. I know. And they tell him no. What was surprising was that Delahunt also got it's turned not down. surprising. This, I was surprised. This is the whole thing, Frank. They, they just, they, like, they caved to the Herald. They caved to the Howie Cars of the world. They caved to these doctors that run DPH who hate marijuana. <laughs> they, it's obvious. You've got, you got the just-say-no crowd running a medical marijuana program. That's what is happening in Massachusetts. And they wonder why they, they don't care about patients. Because these people still think marijuana is addictive. They still think people are overdosing on it. They think that it's a major problem, like it's to be treated like plutonium. Yeah, well, that's the thing is now that you have all these people that are drumming up, oh, look at all these increases in, you know, doctor's visits for marijuana yeah. and this and that other thing. And it's like, it's not marijuana, it's not cannabis that's causing these things, you know. People have pre existing conditions and maybe they shouldn't, you know, it, it's not for everybody, you know. And, and this uh, Karen Van Noonan, the DPA, the new DPH commissioner, what a joke. She sends this letter to uh, patients basically saying, you can't have caregivers service with Bill Downing. And you have two choices, she basically says. You could find a new caregiver, which they can't find a new caregiver. Patients who are dying in Massachusetts can't find a new caregiver. And why? Because of the policy she is putting up, that she pushes, that she's promoting, that she stands behind. and Or they can just uh, decide not to use medical, like basically give up. They can, they can decide they can go that they don't need the it anymore. They can go back to the oxys. Everything will be cool. Go it's get like, your, why don't you go tell that to you know, Karen Van Noonan? Go tell that to Steve Staling, who uh, ha, you know, who's in a wheelchair, who who can't even get the medicine that he needs right now because of this crazy law and the way that you're not implementing it. Tell him that. Well, and then it forces people to go and, and find black market solutions, and it's like Bill Downing was trying to provide a service, do it within the letter of the law by only serving one patient, you know, at a time. And filing all the necessary paperwork, you know, and and trying to do the right thing. And that's how you get treated, because unless you're Valerio Romero or Romano, you know, and, and you've got money behind you and you're part of some Frank, organization. Frank, this is what I'm talking about. The people, uh, this is what's being used against you. This is what the whole marijuana community, wake the hell up. Stop repeating that crap, because this is what they're using against you. There is no great cabal. The cabal is you. They're using yourself against you. We, there is there is not going to be any medical marijuana dispensaries open. Valerie and Romano are not. This is what they're doing. They're shutting down the program. They're killing the clock. This is not happening. There aren't going to be anyone. Nobody is opening. You don't think there's going to be a single one? No, one or two? If they're lucky? And not well, through some grand scheme... Just due to the fact that they're putting every roadblock up, they had over 100 applicants. Now we're down to 11. How many of the 11 are going to get a, a city or town approval? Maybe three? Well, isn't that what's happening out in the Berkshires? Doesn't the Berkshires only have, like, one? 
and I, like and, the entire uh, Western. Do they mass. even have one now? Exactly. That's what I'm saying. It's like they're sh- like they're just making them so monopolized. Yeah. Well, they want to squeeze every last dollar they so can get out of the people. If we're people. lucky, we'll have Coke or Pepsi. Oh, exactly. And if we're not lucky, we'll have nothing. I mean, that's... Oh, we'll just have Coke. Yeah. I mean, we're going to get something, I, no, but that's something... Not necessarily. Is, that's I, what I'm telling you. Like, people need to wake up. The, no, I don't think we're getting anything at this point. I don't think it's that bad. I I, do. I, I think that, you I know, do. just we need to step up the pressure on the DPH and, well, you know, not, it's try to the, stay positive about it. I don't think it's the DPH at this point. No, it's definitely the DPH. I mean, no, I'm, saying, I'm saying it, it is. I'm saying this is our next guest, China. Yeah. In. No, no, <laughs> we haven't even introduced you yet. Yeah, we'll, we'll get to you later. Yeah. <laughs> He's gonna remain nameless. Yeah, for <laughs> you're out of you. You're out of turn. <laughs> you're out of order. Yeah. But carry on with your point. No, 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 no Frank. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> yeah, that's it. We're done. We, we, Frank, we, like we, we, we're going on to other things. Uh, Karen Van Noonan, she said, "I'm delighted to be at this point. I'm delighted." He's delighted. Yeah. What, and she she said she I, and she I mean she wrote a pay, uh, uh, a letter to patients telling them I'm taking away your medicine nothing you can do about it I mean and she's delighted she's delighted this is what really drives me crazy is that the DPH and the Boston Herald and the Boston Globe and the local media have not consulted with patient groups patient advocates or patients or any of this this whole fiasco that's been going on for months and she's delighted I say you know what. Karen Van Noonan, F you. You're a piece of trash. Until you talk to patients like myself, you're trash to us. You're, you've gone to war. You are killing patients. I'm telling you this. I've had friends die fighting for this medical marijuana in Massachusetts, and people are still dying, and you're delighted. You are delighted. Disgusting. Disgusting. You should lose your job. You, you think, oh, I did a good job. I got rid of uh, Delahan. Oh, I got rid of... No, you are killing patients. Patients have no access you shut down Bill Downing, the only o- option available to patients right now. You're slowing down the dispensaries. They're probably not going to open. They're running out of money, and nobody's listening to patients. No one's talking to MPAA, Mass Patients Advocacy Alliance. No one's talking to myself, the number one person writing about this every single week in Boston, the expert. No one's talking to any of my patients that I talk to. We're, we're so fed up in this community. We're ready. I'm serious. We're ready to riot. That's and you could come lock me up for going over the line, but you're killing people. And I've had enough, Karen Van Noonan. I've had enough DPH, and patients have had enough. Absolutely, and absolutely, and we're the ones who need to do something about it. So we need to keep up the pressure. We need to call Karen Van Noonan. We got to think of a better yeah, we name. Yeah, we have a, we have a phone number too. Like you can look her up. She's on Twitter. I want to I want to make it a campaign against this woman, against the DPH, against these suits. They shouldn't just get away scot free. Throw all this trash at our community at what we've been trying to do, and then just you know walk away with no medical marijuana after all this time, all this money, all this time spent, resource. The patients are getting the raw end, and nobody seems to care at the Herald, at the Globe, or the DPH. Well, yeah, and at the end of the day, the you say if we do end up with worst case scenario like you're saying, and we get one dispensary or two lucky, dispensaries, if we're lucky, you know, yeah. that dispensary is going to have you know five hundred dollar. You know, an ounce, you know, weed. They're not gonna, thousands of uh, patients. They're not yeah. going to care about anybody oh, except yeah. for what they're doing. You know, I mean, come on. Come mo- on. Money, quality. You know, when I mean, if you talk about having multiple different options, you're obviously gonna, if you have competition, you're de- definitely going to have a better product, have a better service. But and I, and if I'm, you just I'm have not, the one yeah. group, then that's it. You're going to get a shit, sir, a crappy service. And, and we got to ask patients to start stepping it up. Like I think we should. Monday morning, be down there at DPH with signs, like every single day. I got some dentist appointments coming up down there. I can't get much time off, but I'm going to go up there. I want to protest. We need to show up. I'm going to walk right in their offices. Like, I want to bring my camera, get in their faces. Like, we need to really take it to the next level. Um, I've been talking to a lot of advocates, a lot of the uh, dispensary groups. I think people are ready to take it to the next level, and I think that's what you're going to see because this DPH, the Democrats, they've done nothing but harm patients and the local media is letting them get away with it, except for Dick Boston, except for WEMF, yep. except for the show. Right. You know? But they're, they're also, they're, there needs to be some sort of recourse, you know? Like, why is there no recourse for, well, there is. I think for there Greenway is. or a Greenway? I, I think there, you know? there could be a lawsuit. There could be an appeal. There is some breaking news. I'm getting information coming in that there may be an appeal for Greenway specifically. And that's what I think the patient should be asking for is... We want, like, we don't want them just to uh, acknowledge that we're here because they've been ignoring us for how many years now? Ever since this law passed, they've ignored the patients. We've protested already. We've been in the media. We, they, they ignore us, DPH. We don't only 
want to be finally acknowledged as patients, as human beings, but we want them to actually do something. Number one, give Greenway a license. They have approval in the city of Cambridge. Open Greenway. Number two, give Greenheart a license. Give the other dispensary in Boston a license. The, a lot of these licenses that they said no to is a bunch of BS. They should just give the licenses up. Well, the reasons are nonsense. problems later, they can always pull the permit later. Yeah, but what are the what were the problems going to be? I mean, I can speak to Greenway and Greenheart and say that these were two organizations that, in the case of 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 Greenway, you know, are reaching out to the community. Same with Greenheart, both of them reaching out to the community, having meetings with the people, talking with the city council people, you know, going out and explaining exactly what they want to do and and providing their own security for themselves as well as the surrounding neighborhood with a tr- people with a track record in the, in the case of Greenheart of building up the community that they enter into and providing good solid jobs yes, paying sir. jobs with 401ks and vacation time and medical and dental you know stuff that you don't get you know when you go work at you know a convenience store or you go work at a, a, a mcdonald's or you know whatever which is kind of what we're going to be getting into with our uh next guest, guest john we can say his name now can we say his name why not <laughs> so we got john murphy in here yeah and if you want to call in, the number is 617-500-7100. That's right. This is WEMF Radio. My name is Mike Can. This is the show, The Young Jerks. My co-host is Frank Capone, who you heard. Howdy. We have John Murphy coming up next at the next break. He's we anxious shushed to earlier. <laughs> we, shut, we shut him down. We've been, we've been shutting things down today. We're we'll shut down upset. the DPH because yeah, they're not doing anything for anybody. And he can definitely speak on this later, the DPH, John Murphy, because he's got uh, some experience with this cause but that's not why we really have john murphy here no it isn't it isn't we are going to have a little bit of a discussion a little bit of a debate a little bit of a uh exploration about what about raising the minimum wage which is just happening which is happening it's is going it happening high enough though to 11 well i don't know that's something we're going to get into you know is it high enough is it low enough is it really about the minimum wage is it about something else maybe yeah what is it about i don't know but we're going to well, talk think, about it i think it. our listenership knows what it's about yeah so give us a call it's uh 617 yeah, we're we, the young uh, jerks. We're gonna take right. a break. We'll be back. We got a good producer back there today. He's the man. Hey, hey. So, what's your name? Shout out your name again. Benny Tucker. Benny, Benny Tucker. Benny, you know what? I just realized I didn't even know that was Benny Tucker. Now I'm like, wow. Now I, because he's a Facebook friend. Afternoon sessions. <laughs> oh, I like your stuff on Facebook all the time. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so we got Benny Tucker back there. <laughs> he's got a show here every day. So that's check right. him out weekdays. Yeah, that's right. And we'll be back here on WEMFRadio.com. WEMF, 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 WEMF. Back live to, no. Hey, the, the Young, young jerks, jerks on WEMFRadio.com. We we're just going crazy today. That's right. We're just we're hanging loose today. And we, we actually got a caller uh, while we were on break. So we're going to uh, skip back a little bit to our beginning segment. And uh, we have Nikki Smokes on the line. Who? Uh, hey guys. Hey, hey! Thanks for calling. Who got a letter from uh, from Mass yep. DPH Commissioner Karen Van Noonan? Noonan. Noonan. We we're just talking about that letter. What, what's up with this letter? What did it say? Or how did it make you feel? Well, it was it was an absolute surprise. It's basically a letter saying that the caregiver you have chosen has already had already has another patient, so you can't use that caregiver and. You're just stuck with finding someone else. Or, and it was really yeah. awesome. or you could choose to give up or something. What was the last? I mean, it was just ridiculous. Like I didn't see that part, yeah, but yeah. I actually got to, I got to show the letter to um, my senator Joan Lovely. So hopefully. And what did um, she say? What did, what did your state senator say when she, she saw that letter? She she said that she knows that people obviously can't get the medicine. I was showing her caregiver, you know, medicine, what it looks like, how professional they try to be. And I go, they're forcing us to go to the street. And here is a letter from the DPH saying we can't use this caregiver. We have to find another one. Yeah, it's like, it's she like, said, okay, she gets it now. Yeah, and it's like that letter, like to me, it's such a slap in the face. We're paying this woman, Karen Van Noonan, how much money to write patients and basically taunt sick patients and be it's almost like f you you can't use this medicine ha 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 like that's what the letter to me represents it's like what is she doing what is this this lady's not offering writing a patient to help them which she should be no. doing she's writing a letter to tell the patients that you can't get medicine 
Too bad. Yeah, there's no solutions offered. I mean, but at the end of the day, Nikki, what's the penalty if you continue on with the caregiver you're continuing, you have now? What's the penalty? What are they going to do? There is no penalty. We're not in violation. Um, The caregiver is in violation, so they should know enough not to give you care. And so the caregiver is closing down. The caregiver has said in the Boston Globe that he's closing down. So the service is no longer there. That's that's what it happens. The patients get nothing. I was able to show my senator, say, hey, look, this is the kind of treatment that we're getting from the Department of Public Health, and we need caregivers, and that would probably help us now in the short term before the dispensaries are open, you know, because they have a long way away, like you were saying, you know, because they're going through so much trouble, which is also another um, DPH hack job I'm, 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 yeah and my gloves are off now I'm, I've had an I'm at war with DPH well how can you I'm not calling be? them scumbags like I don't care like I've, I'm and I'm not someone that does this on a regular basis let's put it that way I think Frank should <laughs> shake this in maybe but, like like come on like these guys what they're doing to us killing people yeah no it's they're it's, it's horrible and, and thank you very much Nikki for, for, for calling in and sharing that with us it's important you know to hear no from problem. you know patients who actually receive the letter and stuff and and uh, you know are just trying to get good you know quality medicine and uh, the DPH is standing in the way every step well yeah. we're trying to do something about it and thank you guys very much for having me on thank I'll you, talk to you later. all right bye Nikki thank you Definitely. 